Thank you. It's great to be here. Thanks for making it up. So, got a lot of folks up this morning. So, this is a, a challenge for me. Uh, I started a couple of open source projects, and people now want me to see the future. And uh, I'm a guy who's in the past worked by looking at the present, looking at facts, and deciding what to do next. Not attempting to look too far down the road. So I wasn't sure how I was going to do this. You know, I don't uh, have a time machine. I can't see the future any better than you can. It's a little stuck. And it occurred to me that there are facts about the present that house within them contain predictions of the future. So, for example, you've got a rocket. If you know where that rocket is, you know how fast it's going, you know which direction it's pointed, you can make a pretty accurate prediction about where it's going to go, where it's going to land. If it's got a bomb at the tip, you're going to try to get out of that area. If it's got people on it, you might go meet them. It's not a guaranteed outcome. It could be an asteroid gets in the way. But it's likely enough that you're going to base your plans on it. So in that vein, what I want to do is look at some facts about data and see if we can infer the future from those, see if they have housed within them predictions uh, that we can agree on and, and help us to see where we're headed. So we'll start with some easy old ones. We've seen this phenomenal growth for decades in the capabilities of computer hardware. Just about every aspect, processor speed, memory size, network throughput, hard disk storage space, has been improving exponentially for close to 50 years now. This may not continue forever. It may slow down. But I wouldn't bet against it continuing to improve. So what can we predict from this about data? Well, the simple, obvious prediction is we'll be able to afford to store and process more data in the future uh, than we can today. So why do we care? Turns out that in parallel with this growth in the capabilities of hardware and some degree the driver of that growth in hardware has been the adoption of technology. We've seen technology invade just about every, in every industry, as well as our, our personal lives. And all of these bits of computing that pervade our society generate data. They leave tracks of what we're doing, what our institutions are succeeding at, what they're failing at. They give us an image of ourselves, of our businesses, that we can choose to look at. And if you look at the growth in sectors of the economy and in businesses, it's most rapid in areas that are aggressively adopting technology and making use of data. So not only will we be able to afford to store and process more data in the future, we can't afford not to if we're going to remain successful. So we need some software. What kind of software? In the past decade, uh, we've really seen a remarkable transition um, uh, towards open source, in particular for platform technologies. 
Linux and Android are obvious examples of this. And I think it's fairly understandable. Businesses are now built around technologies. It's a core component. And you don't want your business to be captive to some other business. If someone else can arbitrarily change licensing fees, they can affect your bottom line arbitrarily. And if you don't have an alternative that you can move to, you're stuck, so-called lock-in. Open source, to a large degree, avoids this. You have a choice of vendors. You're not necessarily paying fees at all for your core technologies. Instead, you pay for the value you receive from a vendor, not just rent on software that maybe doesn't change much. So what prediction can we make from this? It seems clear to me that in the future, platforms for data must be open source to be accepted. Basic requirement. So what, what's the open source platform out there? Well, <laughs> this slide actually was supposed to be edited out, so I hope it's not disturbing to you. Uh, see, it's getting a chuckle, which is now bad. Um, 10 years ago, I started work on the project that became uh, Hadoop. And in its early days, it had a lot of limitations. Uh, it uh, wasn't really that scalable and reliable. That got fixed. Community came together, um, made it very scalable, very reliable. It wasn't very secure. If you had some data that you wanted, some people were able to see and operate on and others not, it was hard to guarantee that. To a large degree, that's been remedied. It had a single point of failure. That's been removed. We've now got a very available system here. Again and again, we see these fundamental improvements to this core of a platform. So I, I think what we can generalize, what we can predict from this, is that Hadoop is going to continue to get better and form a scalable, reliable, reusable kernel for our data systems. So wh what's been happening in parallel around Hadoop? We've seen the addition of remarkable sets of, of new functionalities built on top of Hadoop. Hadoop started out as just a batch processing system uh, for Java programmers, primarily, um, which was incredibly valuable, uh, opened up the ability to process petabytes affordably or even at all in many cases, uh, flexibly. But it, there were more opportunities out there uh, for this platform, and people came and filled them. Uh, you know, we saw initially higher level languages uh, like Pig and Hive that remove the requirement that you be a Java programmer to, to make use of this. Then uh, we started to see, in parallel, uh, the addition of real-time components. First, HBase, providing uh, NoSQL API. Then Impala, interactive SQL. And more recently, Search. So the prediction I think we can make here is that more and more types of workloads will be supported on top of Hadoop. It's a clear trend. In the near future, we're, we're seeing Spark, you know, uh, in-memory, streaming, graph, all kinds of new processing metaphors moving to this platform, providing you with new tools to combine, view, analyze, understand your data. And that we can expect to continue. So what, is this, what does this make Hadoop? Where, where are we with all this? 
You know, I, in the early days, expected there to be multiple systems like Hadoop competing uh, to be potentially a platform. And really, nothing else has emerged. Uh, Hadoop has come to dominate the big data space. Uh, and it's becoming really the kernel of the de facto standard operating system for big data. It's becoming ever more general, and it's no longer really a place you go to process your data, as it was initially with MapReduce, but it's really the, the locus for connection between applications. It lets folks successfully, reliably, confidently share data and share hardware resources. And I think as we move forward, that's the focus of Hadoop proper. And the ecosystem, meanwhile, is adding more and more functionality to this. And we see the need to have other systems diminish. People are taking workloads out of silos and bringing them to Hadoop-based systems. As we really see this develop into, as Mike called it yesterday, an enterprise data hub. How far can we go with this? What's, what's, the, what's the limit here? Um, and my belief is <laughs> the sky's the limit. I, it's hard to imagine a kind of a workload which you can't move to this platform. Uh, we're really striving to build a very general platform. And thus far, I think, I think we've succeeded. Um, you know, Transactions are something that were long thought to be out of scope for this style of platform. Uh, there's a lot of important cases for transactions. If, you've got, if you're selling a, a ticket to something, then you need to move money from one place to another. You need to assign a seat to someone. And you need to make sure that the money's in one place or the other, not in both, not nowhere. And you need to, at the same time, assign that seat or not assign that seat. Uh, this is an important class of workload um, that is currently well served, but not by the, the Hadoop platform. A year ago, Google published a paper describing their internal system they have built on their platform that's very similar to Hadoop, which does this, demonstrating that it's possible to bring online transaction processing to this style of platform. And in the past, when we've seen it's possible, within a few years, it happens. So I think the prediction we can make here is that it's inevitable that we'll see just about every kind of workload be moved to this platform, even online transaction processing. So I doubted that we'd be able to predict the future. I think I've made, we've made some reasonably bold predictions. In conclusion, I think it's, if we look at the overall what we're seeing, it's really that Hadoop does assume this role as the, the center of an enterprise data hub. We're in the middle of a, of a revolution in data processing. Revolutions are scary times. Folks aren't sure what's going to come next. They're not sure what allegiances to make, what path they should follow. Hadoop, I think, provides a clear path that will endure into the future, supporting wide varieties of workload. And I think you can be comfortable adopting Hadoop for your data needs. Thank you very much.